Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me. Today, I'm going to challenge you to think bigger. If I asked you to describe for me your identity, what would you say? I think I could summarize most of these answers by saying they'd include discussions surrounding your family, your children, friends, nationality, perhaps what you've studied, what you do for a living. Most likely your immediate tangible circumstances or environment. But I think it's time that we start thinking much, much bigger than that. Because we are part of something much bigger. Not necessarily insignificant. In fact, I think we can argue today it's more important. But I want you to start thinking bigger. So I want to introduce to you a concept of cosmic identity. So to do this, we need to back up a little bit. For thousands of years, civilizations have looked up and sought to understand the stars and the planets in the sky, why they're there, how they're moving, what they mean. These interpretations have taken many different forms. But it wasn't until the scientific revolution and the emergence of astronomy that astronomical models were made such as this one. From 1543, Nicholas Copernicus proposed here that the sun was the center of the universe, that the Earth and the other planets circled around it in circular shapes. We know today this is not fully correct, but it is still very, very important. Because for the first time, humans were thinking of not only their place on Earth, but also in space. So this idea of our sense of place and sense of self was growing. It wasn't for another over 400 years until we knew of things that existed beyond our own solar system. So the ability to think of anything that existed or thrived beyond that was largely impossible or primarily science fiction. So in order to think of what takes place beyond, science helped us out with the emergence and discovery of exoplanets. In 1995, 51 Pegasi b was found to be the first exoplanet orbiting a normal star. And to think since then, that number has grown to over 4,000 proven exoplanets. So only in two and a half decades, our understanding of planetary systems that could be explored has completely expanded. But I still don't think we're thinking big enough. I think there is one mission in particular that we all just mentioned that has had a particularly strong impact on the sense of self in place. From a scientific perspective, an arts and humanities perspective, we'll get into it. But I want to think for each of you what that means on an individual scale and how we can collectively identify our, our identities. So the Hubble Space Telescope was launched in April of 1990 as a joint mission between NASA and the European Space Agency. To give you a little bit of context, in the year 1990, we got, for the first time, proof that there was, in fact, a hole in the ozone layer above the North Pole, kick-starting the climate change revolution. East and West Germany were reunited following the fall of the Berlin Wall, and the very first page was published on the World Wide Web. It's a very different world. I wouldn't have been even around for a few years yet. So a lot can change in three decades, and the year 2020 will mark 30 years since the beginning of operation for the Hubble Space Telescope. It had a few rocky years at its start, but we all know that it has come to be far worth it. It features a 2.4 meter diameter primary mirror, and its four main instruments observe the universe in the ultraviolet, near-infrared, and visible regions of the electromagnetic spectrum. Because it orbits the Earth at roughly 550 kilometers above us, it is free from the obstruction of the atmosphere, and it's looking clear into the cosmos. So if we want to think about our sense of place and identity on a cosmic scale, first we need to answer questions. And of course, this is done by science. So let's think of the hows, whats, and whys that Hubble has provided for us. When it was first launched, Hubble was looking to set an age for the universe. It was one of its primary goals. Hubble observed Cepheid variables, which almost act like a beacon or a lighthouse navigation for astronomers. These are pulsating stars that vary in brightness over time. But because of this consistency, astronomers can use them as age markers. And we went from the year 1990, when Hubble was launched with an age estimate of the universe from 10 to 20 billion years, to shortly after Hubble's launch, this was then scaled down to 13.7 billion years old. For the first time, humans had a single number 
to describe how old the universe has been the way it is. But of course, this leads to even more questions. One of its other primary purposes was to determine the reason or the scale and the evolution of the Hubble constant, the expansion of the universe over time. Ever since the Big Bang, the universe has been growing and growing and growing. But this value and the speed of rate of change has changed. We're not fully sure why. Hubble has been able to specify this rate of change, but it's opened a whole new window. Because of Hubble's discovery, the next generation of astronomers are going to be making discoveries and huge breakthroughs in areas such as dark matter and dark energy. So we're all anticipating what it is that they'll be coming out with. Hubble has also taken things from entertaining matters of science fiction into reality, things that we only dreamt of or like to imagine. And one of those being black holes. This year we saw a picture of one for the first time, and Hubble has been able to characterize various aspects of black holes, including their characteristics and their fabric in space and time. Hubble has also assisted in our understanding of exoplanets. What you're looking at here is the first visible snapshot of an exoplanet circling its parent star. Hubble was also used to examine the atmosphere of a super-Earth exoplanet for the first time. <coughs> Hubble has also been able to look at things that are even smaller than exoplanets, exomoons, which for some of us is exciting because we like to compare it to our own planetary system. And Hubble was able to do this with the Kepler Space Telescope. And it was able to determine that the moon was orbiting its host planet and star about 8,000 light years away. This exomoon is roughly the size of Neptune. It was used using the transit system. So as it passes in front of its host star, the luminosity and light curve is dipped. And astronomers are able to detect this. This is something we are very eager and excited for to watch when the James Webb Space Telescope launches and succeeds in Hubble's discoveries. Hubble has also taken matters or theories and tested them or proved them. Albert Einstein presented in his theories of relativity that massive objects can deform space-time. Hubble has been able to show us this by a special situation in space and astronomical observations during which objects align. So as I stand in front of you right now, some of you are in my line of sight. But imagine that one of you acts as a lens and you're distorting and magnifying all the other people behind you. Hubble is able to observe this phenomenon in what's known as gravitational lensing. What you see here is very rare, and it's hard to detect, but it's also very hard to observe. But Hubble was able to do this and to decipher some details in these banana-shaped arcs that you can see. Now, while these scientific developments are important and they develop where we came from, which, of course, is very connected to our sense of self and identity, I think we all know what Hubble is most recognized for. And it has shown us a view into the universe now for almost three decades. But if ask anyone you sit next to on the bus, they will argue their knowledge of Hubble for its imagery. Hubble shows us the universe as it actually exists. We don't have to imagine it anymore. Everything that it pictures is truly beautiful. So our sense of place and our sense of self really has a visualization element that it never did before. One thing that I like to think of most in terms of contributions is the Hubble deep field images. We didn't know how deep, how dense, and how full of stuff the universe was until we took the Hubble deep field images. To do so, Hubble observes a tiny piece of the sky for a very long time. And the long exposure image that results is truly spectacular. What you're looking at is the Hubble ultra deep field image of 2004. It blew everyone away. You're looking at over 10,000 galaxies, each with millions upon millions of stars. And since then, we've released even more Hubble deep field images of even more galaxies, greater quantity, and even further in age. Hubble also reminds us of how dangerous space is and how fragile Earth is. You're looking at a 1994 Hubble Space Telescope image of Jupiter getting hit by a comet. But it also reminds us of what we are or what we came from. Hubble has beautiful imagery, but sometimes we forget to think about the science behind these images. We look at planetary nebula, star-forming regions, supernova explosions during the death of stars. We're seeing how the elements of the universe are made. And you and I are, after all, just products of stardust. 
I think it's very easy to get caught up in the trials and challenges of our everyday life, our immediate circumstances. So when I describe those ways of considering identity, these are all immediate things. So for now on, I want you to think bigger. Hubble has provided us a view into the universe, a scientific understanding of where we've came from, but it also had a long-lasting impact long after its operations cease. It has inspired the next generation to pursue space science and engineering. It has provided philosophers, artists, filmmakers a means of developing cosmic narratives to bring the cosmos to humanity. So when you think of your identity, I want you to think bigger, on a cosmic scale. We are not just citizens here at ISU, or alumni, students, teachers. We are not just citizens of Earth. But as you can see, hopefully here today, that you are all part of something much bigger, much greater, and much more beautiful. Thank you. Thank you.